Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're taking a look at this mini OLED instrument cluster display that has a lot of features built in, like trunk signal, blind spot monitoring system, you can see the high beam, you can see door open and close, it will automatically show that on the screen there. So it just comes with a lot of features packed. It also shows the autopilot warning, the nag and everything in this screen. And the best part of this is you could always remove this and then use this as your phone charger. So you put your phone and it starts charging. So this is a very, very portable instrument cluster display. Now this product was sent to us free of charge by TLER. They have got so many different products, including B2L devices where you can use your Tesla's battery to charge anything. We have showed you a couple of those options and there's just a lot of products for them. And as you know, the Thanksgiving, the, the Black Friday is coming, they're gonna have a lot of sales. So if you wanna check them out, so this is the product that we are reviewing here today. You can select Model Y Juniper, Model 3 Highland, all the older Tesla model, like even the, the Intel Model 3s and Ys are supported with this. And you without the OBD charger or the OBD charger that we talked about here. And if you hit the card, I'm gonna show you how you can save some money. Now on the checkout screen, if you go over here and put a discount code S-H-I-V-A-T-E-S-L-A, -S Shiva Tesla, hit apply you're gonna see $53 knocked off from that. So that's $145 for this display. I'll let you be the judge if this is worth it or not, but that's how you can save some money. This is affiliate code. We make a very small commission at no additional cost to you, which greatly helps us bring videos like this in the future. Let's continue. So they send you multiple packages and these are each, you know, this is the transmitter, there's your mobile phone holder, this is the actual dashboard. So they call it cookie here and then this is the docking station. So they send you everything as four different packages. Let's take it out and show you what that looks like. So here is everything that you need and you get on this kit here. So this is the docking station. This is for the Model 3 Highland and Juniper where you have got the little OBD power source. So you don't have to route the power all the way to like the 12 volt here or in the front. So this is just for the Highland and Juniper. This is your mobile phone charger. So, you know, you can dock this in the steering wheel column. We're gonna show you. And then there is the USB-C there. So if you have the newer car, you can plug in this USB-C right here and plug it into the OBD. If you have older car, you're just gonna have to route this to the central console area. Then you got your dashboard itself. This is a small dashboard here. This is the OLED screen. We're gonna talk about this here uh, during the video. And then you've got the wiring. And this is super simple because all you need is a OBD connection on the A pillar and then the power source. We have done this multiple times. And then there is this little adapter that sends the transmitter that sends all the signal to wirelessly to that uh, dash dashboard there. So that's it. So for all cars, we're gonna start with the wiring on the A-pillar and then we'll deal with this uh, in a second where we just mount it. But essentially, this thing just needs power. So you could even put it on your any other uh, wireless charger as long as this has the power the max safe the qi power this works without anything else like you don't even have to route the cable or anything so the first step on installing this is we got to remove this panel here no matter if it is a highland juniper all the older cars um, and to do that we just have to remove a couple of these panels let's get started all you have to do is first unlatch this weather stripping just up to somewhere here by the door so that's the first step now we're going to remove this panel now you're gonna take the pry tool and prop open this panel right here on the side. Just be gentle with this step. It doesn't require much force. You just go up and then prop this out, depending on how many times you have removed this. Mine, I haven't really removed this yet, so it should be pretty straightforward. And there you go. It just comes out, so that's super simple. Next, we have to remove this plastic fastener and just take your pry tool and prop that open. And if you look at it, this just comes out. So you're gonna keep this in a safe place and then move on to the next step. Next step is really to just remove this bottom trim panel here. And if you look at it super easily, that's how it comes out. So this is what we are after. There is gonna be a OBD port. It could be a gray port, white port, blue port. It could be right here. Just look for a port like this um, for Juniper Highland, AMD model, it's the exact same thing, except Intel cars, which have a port inside, and I don't think this product is compatible for Intel anyways, but right here, so this is what you're looking for. It's gonna be an open port just sitting there, either here or there. For Highland, it's gonna be right here, it's gray. Uh, for Juniper, it might be a different color, it might be right here, but 
you'll see that. This is an open OBD port, and this is your power cable. So this is how we are going to tap into power. This is the plug that we are after. It's gonna be an open plug. As I say, if you have other accessories, no problem, because it's just gonna be an open plug. So you take the new kit that came with this dashboard, and you take this uh, plug here, and simply plug it into the open plug that you find. So that goes, and then it just clicks into its place. So we're just going to push this in. There you go. So that clicks into its place. So the data part is done. Now it is just the power part and power is just this guy here. So this is a 12 volt adapter here. So you just press on the middle tab here and hold it and then remove that. Then you take the other end of this, press it. Here you go. Now you take the, the male end that you removed earlier and then basically press it here. Now you're good to go. So the power is done and the data is done. So now it is fully connected. This is your transmitter. This is going to provide all the data for the dashboard. Now all we gotta do is hide this here and then just basically put everything back together. Now we are ready to install this, the phone holder that we need to install on the back of the steering wheel here and then take this to connect to the USB-C. Now they do send you a little template. So this is a little sticker that kind of makes it easy for you to apply it right here and then paste it and then it will let you find the center location here you can do that or you can just eyeball it like if you want somewhere here i think that sounds about right i don't have to do much with this this is this is pretty straightforward all you have to do is remove this 3m adhesive the sticker this is pretty good strong adhesive and you look for that area clean this area of course and then find that center point that you would like. You wanna do it on this back wall here, not on the top here. It needs to be on the back wall. And then once you find that good spot and it is aligned, you can just press this and that's how simple this is. So again, you wanna, you wanna align this. You can definitely use the template paper if you want. And then uh, if this is not centered, don't press it down hard. So you can kind of align this and then move it. Uh, but the template paper might vary a little bit based on the car model. So you have to be comfortable with where that is because that's where we're gonna be putting in the, the little screen. Now we need to route this wire. Uh, on the older car, you have to take it all the way back to the central console area. I'll show you here in just a second. But for newer car like Highland or Juniper, you get this adapter. And if you reach right underneath here, you're gonna see a port that you can simply just plug this in and then you can plug in the USB-C. So your routing becomes so much shorter and cleaner on the newer car. But for us with the older car, you do have to route that cable all the way through the side and take it to the back. Now for the older cars, you can go from the back there, kind of try to hide it as much as possible. Of course, you can do your wire management through there and then bring it all the way. And our goal is to take it to this guy here on the back. So that's where we're going. Now we have installed the charger here. We just have to bring this puck and then face this. Of course, that is the orientation here. There's also USB-C port in the bottom and you just align the C port there and just let it be. As you see, it already showed the logo and then it is now showing me the miles and the battery percentage there. If I press on the brake, it goes back to the gear, pressing the brake, which you can see that it goes back to showing that. So let's talk about some of those components here. So just from the startup here, there is not much to this. It'll show you the cabin temperature here. It shows the gear that you are in, shows you the battery temperature there. And then if you toggle the trans signal, it will show there. If you do the high beam, you're gonna be able to see that. And then if we were to open any of the doors, so driver door, it says driver door open. And if I open the passenger door, it will show the passenger door open. So it will just show all of those doors that are open, which is great. And yeah, as I said, there is not much to this. Now, if we were to took the car into reverse, you're gonna be able to see that. Neutral, drive, and in drive, great thing is it shows the US basic speed limit sign there instead of just that red circle, which is great. If I press on the brake, you're able to see that I'm pressing on the brake. So just all the general stuff that you typically want to see in front of you is visible right there uh, while you are parked. Now let's take it on a drive and I'm going to show you what all you can see. Now, aside from those basic functions, you also get turn signal. So whichever way that you are using your turn signal, you're gonna be able to see that just 
uh, show up on the screen. And then if we toggle autopilot, that thing turns blue there. And um, I think they have a software update to change some of this UI. Oh, by the way, you can also see the nag. Like it is flashing and it is giving you that nag there, which is really great. I think they have a software update that uh, I haven't been able to figure it out here, but um, I'll, I'll ask them and I'll make a follow up video just quickly to show you all what the new UI looks like. They had much more futuristic UI on their page. I guess I say I haven't been able to figure that out. Uh, but right now, as you saw, it has autopilot, the nag, which is great. It has got the front signal. Uh, we're going to test the blind spot detection here in just a second, but just basically everything that you want to see directly in front of you on this little screen there. So here's a test for the blind spot detection system. There's a car that is coming up in my blind spot, and as you can see, it glows orange on that side. And as soon as the car passes, it is going to go away. So that's the last car, and that orange goes away. So it is very clear. So again, there's another car. That is the orange, and if I flash, it is going to flash orange, letting me know I can't go, versus it is going to flash green, so again, another car there. So you can clearly see how this works with the blind spot monitoring system. There's this clear orange indicator that shows there's a car in my blind spot, which is great. They also have an option to toggle the US base speed limit sign. So that sign is gonna look so much cooler um, for the US base folks. So it's not just a circular speed limit like the European version. Now, of course, a great thing about this is you can always just remove this and put your phone here and it will start charging. So that also gives you that flexibility there just with this. So what do you all think about this display? Would you get it for your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I like this type of stuff where it is more wireless. I mean, you still need wire in the front, but this is more of a wireless puck that you can put in and you don't have to always use it. You can just remove it and put your phone in there. So that QI2 charging that it comes with it is, is great. Tita has, it's not a new company. We have seen their products in the past and TL Yard is right now selling their stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty great device. It's small. You're not going to get, you know, front camera or things like that, CarPlay, any of that, because, you know, it's a tiny, tiny puck. Uh, but it does show a lot of stuff in there. And I believe I don't have the latest update on this, honestly, and I need to figure it out how to do that. But I, on their website, I saw some, uh, you know, advanced things like the, the UI was a lot better. And I even saw battery percentages and things like that, not just the charge level. So I'm going to see how I can do that update and then I will put a link in this video uh, kind of doing a follow-up on showing you how to do that and, and uh, what the update comes with. But overall, I mean, it's just another instrument cluster display like what we have seen before. This comes with some unique features. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and come back again soon.